Well, good morning, Alive family. It is Sunday morning. It's Palm Sunday, and we are gathered together in Jesus' name. We're coming together to worship the Lord. So look, what I want you to do this morning is I want you to just get your family together. Get yourselves ready that we can worship the Lord. Hey, let's try something different. Maybe today stand. Take the blanket off. I know some of us are in our pajamas and that kind of thing, but maybe let's act like we're actually in church this morning. Let's all stand, and let's just begin to worship Him, and let's praise Him. I know things are crazy out there in the world right now, but our God, He's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, and His power and His authority is coming into your living room this morning as we begin to worship. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come together. And we have come to lift you up. So right now in our homes and in this place, we invite your presence in. Lord, would you come and be magnified? Would you come and be glorified, Lord? May every person watching be able to enter into your presence. It's not weird to worship in our homes. We were born to do this. It's natural. So, Father, bless this time together. Pour out your spirit. Lord, use this worship team in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, family. Let's worship this morning.
church, we trust in his love this morning. We trust in his never-ending love. Thank you, Jesus, that you cast out all fear. Thank you, God. You know, church, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So as we continue to worship this morning, any thought of fear, any thought of anxiety, any thought of pressure you may be feeling right now, just allow the Holy Spirit to push it out. Allow yourself to be filled with his presence this morning and be refreshed. Be refreshed because there is no fear. There is nothing to fear when we are in his love. There is nothing to fear when we trust in God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship some more. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy till all my fear have gone and I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God and I'm no longer
Carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go, and I see.
Come on, church. I know you're in your homes right now, but can we do that? Come on, let's just gather together and let's run to the Father right now. Father, we need you. Lord, we desperately need you. You're a holy God. And this morning, who else do we have but you? And we run to you, Father. So, Lord, I thank you right now that you're meeting needs. Come on, church, just be encouraged. I thank you, Lord, as we run to you, you're meeting needs. I thank you that lives are being changed right now. And we adore you and we honor you and we worship you. We give you praise. Come on, let's sing it again. Come on, let's run to the Father. Right to now. The Father Come on, church. Fall into grace. That's what we're doing. Done with the hiding, the reason to wait. Yes. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again. Come on, Come on let's run to the Father. I run right to now. the Father. Yes. again and again and again we run to you this morning Lord so Father may your spirit just be poured out on us come on if you're thirsty and you just need something from God come on don't worry about anyone around you or anyone looking if you're looking on your phone just lift up your heart to God right now and say I need you and I want you Jesus I run to you now I thank you that you meet every need of my life. Come on, just pour out your heart before the Lord, church. We pour ourselves out before you, Lord. And we need you. We cry out to you, Lord. Now just begin to thank you. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the worship this morning, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. I believe that worship pleases the Lord. And I believe something is changing for you right now. Supernaturally, God is moving. Be encouraged, church. Be lifted up because we're lifting him up. Father, thank you for everything you're doing. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Now, hey, a tradition of ours, if you're somewhere around somebody, why don't you turn to as many people as possible, give them an alive high five, and then you can be seated. Lord bless you this morning. Well, hey there. Good morning, Alive family. Welcome to Alive Church. As usual, we want to take a minute and tell you about some of the awesome events happening here at Alive. So check this out. If you're worshiping at a live church for the first time today, welcome. We're honored to host you as our guest. Type the word new in the comments section so we can connect with you. We're so excited to get to know you. AliveChurch.tv continues to serve as a great source for information. We've created a new tab called Church Online, where we're going to place important videos, including our online services. So if you are accessing our website by phone, the menu is found by clicking the three bars on the top right of your screen. Let's use our tools wisely during this season. Giving at Alive is now easier and faster by text message. To start, simply text the word GIVE to 833-717-0215 and follow the prompts. You only have to create your profile once. After that, it takes seconds to give, and we hope to make this process easier for you and more consistent for the church. Of course, you can continue to use our website, AliveChurch.tv, if you prefer. We are givers, Alive family. Our prayer team is standing by during service today, and if you need prayer, simply type the word prayer in the comments and they'll pray over you. Your family's needs are important to us. We love doing life with you, so let's pray together. 
As of now, online services will continue through the end of April, and Easter Sunday is next week. We're so excited to celebrate Jesus' resurrection with you. To give special attention and honor to this occasion, we would like to take communion together as a church family. This will be a very powerful time and holy moment together, so we encourage you to join in. As you're able, gather some grape juice and crackers before April 12th, and by participating, we are remembering, honoring, and celebrating Jesus' sacrifice for us. So let's turn our homes into sanctuaries for the Lord. We want to thank you all for joining us for service today. We are the church wherever we may be. We love you. Enjoy the rest of service today. It's good to be alive. Alive family. My name is Pastor Crystal. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Alive. Uh, we just want to say, Alive family, how much we miss you. We miss getting to see your faces and all of our Alive high fives and hugs on Sundays. And we really want to know how you and your family are doing right now. So we have an activity for you. Get your phone out. We would like for you to choose an emoji that represents how your family is feeling during this time and drop it in the comment section. If you're watching from YouTube, you can drop it in the comment section there and we'll see it there too. And we just want to see some sort of faces. At least we'll get to see that. And, and then we'll also know how we can pray for you as well. We really miss you and we can't wait to be back together. And speaking of prayer, if anybody would like prayer today, our prayer team is standing by right now to pray for you. All you have to do if you would like prayer is just type the word prayer in the comment section and they will begin to pray over you and your family. And one last thing before we move on, I would like to extend a very big welcome to all of our guests that are watching us today. We are so honored that you would come and that you would worship with us on this Sunday morning. One of the things that's a really big deal here at Alive are relationships. We always say that we are better together and we would really like to get to know you. So if you are new today, we would like for you to type the word new in the comment section so that we can connect and get to know each other. Now, what we're getting ready to do, Alive Kids, we want you to get up and get ready. Pastor Jim is coming. He has about a five minute power message that's tailored just for you. And then after that, Pastor Jimmy's gonna come and he's gonna minister a message that's right on time for us. So we want you to get ready. Here we go. Hey, Live family. I hope you've really been enjoying today. I've enjoyed the worship, spending time together. We have our amazing children's pastor, Pastor Jim, is going to minister to us. So kids, get up. Let's get ready. Let's have a good time. Adults, you're probably going to get something too. Come on, Pastor Jim. Bless us. Hey, man, well, good morning, boys and girls. It's so good to get to be with you again this morning and share some awesome truths from the Word of God. We're going to have a blast. And I brought two awesome, amazing assistants today. I have Emma. And I have Catherine, and they're going to be helping to teach the Word of God this morning. We're going to have so much fun, so get ready and get and, and all of that. You know what, boys and girls, today is a very special day. It's called Palm Sunday, and Palm Sunday was an amazing time for Jesus because all of the people that gathered to watch him, to honor him, to sing Hosanna to him as he came into the city of Jerusalem on that uh, on that Sunday before the Easter. And I tell you what, boys and girls, the people wanted to honor him. So they got palm branches, they got robes, they got cloaks, and they laid some of them down on the ground so that the donkey that Jesus was riding could walk on them. They did that as a sign of honor. They did that as a sign of respect and worship to Jesus. They looked at him as their king. They looked at him as a king that brought peace. The palm branch represents peace and victory and triumph and all of those awesome things. But most importantly that day, it stood 
for the fact that the people wanted to honor Jesus as their king. Well, just like back then that Jesus wanted us to honor them, to honor him as king, he wants us today, boys and girls, and moms and dads and teenagers, he wants us to honor him today as king. And to help do that, there's an awesome verse in the Word of God. And the Word of God is awesome. It's so amazing. It's so powerful. But the verse that, I, that we want to share with you today, Luke 10, 27, and Emma and Catherine are going to help me teach it. And boys and girls, a lot of you know that verse because we've taught it in a live kids church before. And one of the ways that we like to teach verses is we love to teach it with motion. So so uh, we're going to get down and we're going to do that right now. So get ready, boys and girls. Luke 10, 27. Are you, are you girls ready? Here we go. Luke 10, 27 says this. We ought to love the Lord your God with all our hearts, all our soul, all our strength, and all our mind, and our neighbor as ourselves. So very, very important. So let's say it again, boys and girls, and my awesome assistants are going to help out. They're going to help teach this. So are you ready? Luke 10, 27 says this. We ought to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, and all our mind. Now, boys and girls, that that verse teaches us how important it is, first of all, to love Jesus with all of our heart. How do we do that? Well, all of us, uh, parents, grandparents, teenagers, and kids, all of us, first of all, to honor Jesus as king, we have to have a time where we ask him to come in our heart to be our Savior. And then secondly, when we make Jesus our Savior, when we ask him to save us, we ask him to be our Lord, he wants us to make him king in every area of our life. That includes our strength. So everybody get your muscles ready. I know especially you boys, y'all like to show off your muscles. To, so, and, and so your strength can be used to please God with the activities that you do that you're using your strength to please God, and then your mind. Very important, especially during this time. You have a lot of time to, to maybe, you probably have a lot of extra time to watch things on the Internet, to uh, watch videos, to uh, read things, to listen to music. Make sure, boys and girls, make sure all of us need to be making sure we're honoring Jesus as King by using our minds in the right way. And you know what? So there is a really cool game that uh, brought today, and my two awesome assistants are going to help do that. And since they're, you're not able to really go see your friends or go hang out with them as much as you used to be able to do, uh, they're going to tag, they're going to throw text messages at their friend's house. And so they're going to get ready, and they're going to see how many of those messages, how many emails, how many FaceTimes, and all that, because that's a very creative way nowadays to show how we can show love to our neighbor for Jesus. Are you ready, girls? Mark, get set, go! Fill up that. Get those text messages out there. Get the, oh, boy, they're doing a good job with that. All right, that's a good way to get some, get some, uh, get some love of Jesus out to their friends, their neighbors, their classmates, because that's so important. Already, girls, thank y'all for that. Y'all can put those down now. Good job. Come on back up here. And now we're going to study the verse one more time, and then we're going to pray together. Are y'all ready? Get ready with your smiling faces. We're excited. Show the awesome boys and girls that we're ready to make Jesus the king of our lives today. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Luke 10, 27. We ought to love God with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our strength, and all of our minds. Let's pray together. Father God, in Jesus' name, let us come to you. And I ask you, Father God, 
that you help these boys and girls, in fact, help all of us to, to make you king of our hearts, king of every area of our life. Lord God, help us to make sure that we use our strength and our minds in honoring and pleasing you. Father God, we ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Well, hey, good morning again, Alive family. I hope you really enjoyed the day so far. I know I sure have. Wasn't worship amazing? And kids, we're so proud of you. Didn't Pastor Jim and our kids do a great job? What an incredible day. It's not over yet. I have a word I want to give you from my heart and from the Word of God based on the time that we're living in right now. As I look around the world, I see all kinds of chaos going on because of the coronavirus. And the coronavirus is like a plague that's hit our land, caused us to be quarantined. And there are some respected prophets out there who are prophesying what they believe God is saying. And we know that in Amos chapter 3, the Word tells us, Surely the Sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets. And I don't proclaim to be a prophet. I'm a pastor but I like to listen to what prophets say. And there's a prophet that prophesied, uh, Chuck Pierce, he prophesied last September that this time of the year in 2020, that there would be turmoil happening amongst the nations of the world because that we would be experiencing a plague-like atmosphere. And then in January, uh, he also prophesied that this plague that would hit our land would abruptly begin to end at Passover this year. Now, Passover is starting this next week. It starts, let's see, April 8th and goes through April 16th. The Passover is a Jewish holiday that is celebrated for approximately about seven days. And it celebrates when the Lord delivered the people of Israel out from under the hands of the Egyptians. And so here in Exodus chapter 12, verse 7, it says, Then they are to take some of the blood. Now, what happened is each family was quarantined, just like us. And they were to take a lamb that they owned. Or if they didn't have the finances, they would take a lamb and and they would, uh, several families would get together. And they would take this lamb and they were instructed as the people of God to take the lamb and put blood over the doorpost of their home. And this blood over the doorpost of their home was symbolic. It was symbolic that they were the children of God. So what happened, let's let's go ahead and read. It says, uh, they take some of the blood and put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. And in verse 12 of chapter 7, it says, On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. Verse 13, the blood will be a sign. Remember we said it was symbolic. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague. Let me say that again. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. You see, this plague wasn't for the children of God. It was for the Egyptians. And so what happened that night, the death angel passed through the land of Egypt. And when it came upon a house that had the blood of the lamb applied over it, it did nothing. It went on. It passed that house up. The plague did not enter that home. And it would go to a home like where the Egyptians were. And when the blood of the lamb had not been applied to that home, it would come in and it would kill the firstborn of that home. Now, this actually happened. And to this day, the Jewish people celebrate Passover. Now, here's something neat. When they celebrate Passover, they celebrate it with four cups. Okay, there's other uh, things that they do as well. But they take four cups together in celebration of the Passover. And, And we have taught on these four cups rather extensively in our church. But here's the four cups basically broken down. Cup number one that they take is called the cup of salvation. All right? And it says, I will take you from under the yoke. And so the cup of salvation is is literally about us finding God and becoming God's people. That's the first thing they celebrate is becoming the people of God, the children of God. Number two is the cup of deliverance. And he says, I will free you from being slaves to them. 
Slaves to who? Slaves to the Egyptians. I'm going to free you from slavery. And when we think of Egypt and slavery, we think of our past. We think of addictions. We think of bondages. We think of sinful habits and destructive things in our life. And he says, I will come in and I will free you from that. I will deliver you from that. And so that's what they were celebrating. They were celebrating deliverance. And here's the third cup. It's called the cup of redemption. And in the cup of redemption, he says, I will redeem you with outstretched arm and mighty acts of judgment. And so uh, they celebrate God redeeming them. Now, something about you and I is we have a redemptive purpose. And when God comes in and he redeems us and we find our redemptive purpose, you and I can begin, once we know what that is, making a difference in this world for Jesus. And so the Jews celebrate the cup of redemption. That's number three. Number four, they celebrate the cup of praise. How many like to praise the Lord? I know I do. And so he says, I will take you as my own people and I will be your God and you will be my people. And they celebrate the halal. They celebrate the big moment of becoming God's people. Amen. And so they celebrate these four cups. Now, a lot of people don't know, but there's a fifth cup that they have not celebrated yet, the Jewish people. Now, we as Christians, we celebrate this cup, but they have not celebrated this cup yet. Now, they call it the cup of Elijah. And what that is, is they believe that Elijah will come back one day and that he will proclaim the Messiah to the nations. Now, Jesus called John the Baptist Elijah. And he told the people that John the Baptist was proclaiming the coming of, of Jesus, of the coming of the Messiah, and that Jesus was and is the Messiah. And so the night that they took him, before he was taken prisoner and, uh, to, to, to be beaten and tortured, uh, the night before they came and got him, we call it the Last Supper. And that night they were celebrating Passover. Passover happens right around Easter because that's when Jesus uh, was crucified during Passover. And so uh, they were celebrating Passover that night. And he said, I'm going to introduce to you a new cup, a new covenant. He said, I'm introducing to you today. And it was the fifth cup. And when we take communion, we are celebrating the Messiah until he comes again. And so he says, take and eat. This is my blood. And so we take the unleavened bread and we eat. And then he says, take and drink. This is, this is my, this is, the, the, the unleavened bread represents the body of Jesus. The cup that we drink, which is the fifth cup of the Passover, celebrates the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. Now, as I look around right now, and I see that coronavirus spreading and things happening. I believe that the Lord himself is calling out to the children of God to return to an older version of Christianity. When I was a kid, they would sing this song called, There's Power in the Blood. And you may remember, it says, There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power and the precious blood of the Lamb. Lots of songs back then when I was a kid were written about the blood of Jesus. Today, we don't hear as much about the blood, but I believe the Lord is calling us, the children of God, to return to the blood of Jesus, to return to the power that's in the blood of Jesus. Amen? And so during this time, it's crazy. In my entire life, I've never experienced a true Passover, but we might just be experiencing a true Passover in the coming weeks. And what I mean by that is not that the death angel is going to spread across the land, but there are similarities that we are quarantined in our homes right now. You're watching this not here at the church, but you're watching this in your home with your family. There are similarities that a plague has come and disrupted the nations. A plague called the coronavirus has disrupted our economy and our health and those kinds of things. And so what I believe is going to happen is I believe that we as the children of God are going to uh, by faith, symbolically, apply the power of the blood of Jesus over our homes. I believe as Easter approaches, we're going to see some crazy things. So this is what we're going to do. Next week is Easter. And at Easter, I want you and your family to celebrate communion with us. So this week, I want you to find some grape juice, and I want you to find some unleavened bread, like a, like a cracker. 
And I want you to, to get that ready so that next Sunday on Easter, we can celebrate the fifth cup together and we can celebrate the power of the blood of Jesus during this time. And I believe that if we'll do this in unity, I believe you're going to see that coronavirus just be squelched in the name of Jesus. That's what we're believing. So I want to take a minute, though, to talk about the power of the blood of Jesus. Because when Jesus died for us and his blood was shed for us, now what you and I do, the rest of the world may not do it, but what we're going to do is we're going to apply the blood of Jesus symbolically over our home. And we're going to apply it over our life. And we're going to believe that the power of God would be released on us. So here's six things. Number one, number one, when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he was praying. This is before they came and got him. He asked the disciples, can you not watch and pray with me? He was under tremendous stress. He was under anxiety because he was about to be crucified and tortured. He was about to experience sin of the whole world that he had never experienced before. In the garden, he prayed, God, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But it was not possible because it was the will of God for Jesus to go to the cross. And so we understand that when he began to pray, that he was under such severe tension and stress that blood began to ooze out of the pores of his head. So the blood was applied. The blood of Jesus was released on the pores of his head while he was under anxiety, while he was under stress. And so number one, the blood of Jesus releases peace into our home. Now, that's powerful. Symbolically. Just apply the blood of Jesus over the door of your heart, over the door of your home, and let the peace of God come in right now where you're sitting. Right now, may the peace of God come all over you as the power of the blood of Jesus is released on you and applied. Amen. The second thing is healing. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And we know that Jesus was taken, and he was beaten with a cat of nine tails. We know that the Roman lictor would take a cat of nine tails, which is basically a whip with nine ends on it, and each end had a hook or a piece of bone or something, and every time he hit the back of Jesus, all nine of those hit him, and they would sink in. And when the Roman lictor would pull the whip, it would pull chunks of flesh out of him. He took 39 lashes on his back for you and I, because if he had taken 40, he would be pronounced dead. So they they, they punished him with the most severe, all the way up into 39. 39 lashes is what he took on his body. And when they were done, literally you could see organs and you could see bones and so much blood was pouring out of his body. That blood was was poured out for your healing. And the power of the blood is just as powerful right now as it's ever been. It's been 2,000 years, and the power of the blood has not lost any potency. It has not lost any of its power. The power of the blood that we would apply to the doorpost of our heart and our home is just as powerful. And right where you see it sitting, if you're sick, If you're ill, if there's anything wrong in your body, I proclaim healing over you in the mighty name of Jesus and that the plague of the coronavirus will not come near you in the mighty name. Just receive by faith. Come on, put that blood over your heart that the power of the blood is healing you right now of any sickness, of any disease in Jesus' name. Can you receive that with me? The next one is forgiveness. Forgiveness. And so Jesus died that you and I could be forgiven of our sins. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 15, it says, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins. Now, that scripture is where we get our name, Alive Church, from, that he made us alive with Christ. He forgave all of our sins. Having canceled the debt, verse 14, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us, and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it. Somebody say nailing, nailing, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and the authorities, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross. And what he did was he took the debt of our sin, 
And in those days, if a piece of land, there was a debt on it, they, uh, when it was paid off, they would put a, a sign and they would nail it to a post on that property saying that the debt had been paid off. In other words, the debt was canceled and there was no more debt there. And that's what Jesus did. He was nailed to a cross, to a post, if you will. His hand was nailed. And when the blood poured out of his hand, it proclaimed power for us to receive our forgiveness of all, no matter what you've done. Just right now, apply the blood to your heart and over your home. And just, and just repent right now and receive forgiveness from the Lord. Amen. That's powerful. Who else could forgive your sin? Only Jesus. Amen. Here's number four. Victory. How many need some victory? I love to be victorious. I hate losing. I hate being a loser. I love being a victor. Well, the blood of Jesus releases victory in our life. It goes on in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, that last verse. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now, in that day and time, when an army would defeat another army, say the Romans would defeat another army, they would bring the general or the king of the fallen nation before the Roman general, and they, he would be prostrate before the Roman general, and he, the Roman general, the conquering general, would put his foot on its neck. He would put his foot on the fallen general's neck, proclaiming victory over their enemies. Joshua did that when he was taking the promised land. He would put his foot over the fallen army that, he, that they had conquered. Now, the Bible goes on to say this in Ephesians 1.22, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. God, being the conquering general, the conquering king of kings, has placed his enemies underneath his feet. And when Jesus was nailed to the cross, he was nailed with his hands, but also his feet. And the blood began to pour out of his feet. And that blood was a blood releasing the power of victory in your life. So I proclaim in the name of Jesus, whatever battle you're facing, whatever's coming your way, we proclaim as we put the blood of Jesus symbolically over our doorposts, over our home, over our heart, we proclaim victory over all things. Does that sound good? Do you need victory this morning? I do. We're going to win in Jesus' name. And the blood, getting back to the blood, releases that power. Here's number five, and that's blessing. Blessing. So you see, they took a crown of thorns, and they made a crown, and they nailed it, literally nailed it into his, into his forehead. And as they nailed these crown, these thorns, were, they would pierce his skin and blood would begin to pour. Well, you see back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, it says, To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about what I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns. Remember the word thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. The thorns were symbolic of the curse. And when Jesus died on the cross, the blood that poured from his head, from those thorns, it was symbolic of Jesus defeating the curse. And when the curse is defeated, the, the, the blessing is released. And so would you, by faith right now, just take the blood of Jesus and apply it to your heart and apply it to symbolically the doorpost of your home. And would you receive God's blessing right now? Just right where you're at. Blessing on you. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're not talking about a weak blessing. We're talking about the authority that comes from the blood. It's an incredible blessing being released on you right now in Jesus' name. And it's not released just on anyone. It's those that would receive it by faith. Because you have to believe. You can't even be saved without believing. So do you, do you believe with me? The power in the blood. And number six, the last one I want to minister to you on today is inner healing. You see, you might be going through something right now, I don't know, where your heart's been broken, where you've been disappointed, where things haven't gone your way, where you're frightened, I don't know. But what happened is the Roman soldier, when Jesus was on the cross, he took a spear, and at the tip of that spear, he poked it into the side of Jesus, and it went through Jesus aside and into his heart. And when it hit his heart, his heart was broken. And your heart might be broken today. His heart was broken. And we know it was broken because blood and water flowed. 
Blood and water flowed because his heart was broken. And it's symbolic that his heart was touched. The power of the blood of Jesus is there for inner healing. You might think to yourself, I'm going crazy right now staying inside. Or maybe, like so many, you battle with mental issues and things like that, and you've been feeling depressed, and you haven't got to be around your friends and loved ones. I don't know, but can I speak power over you right now in the name of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, inner healing for you right now. So I want to encourage you to do this with me right now. Just bow your head and your heart. And whatever you're facing, whatever seems impossible, whatever's hurting, I want you to give it to God right now. Would you do that? This, I give all this to you. Come on, if someone's hurt you, I forgive them. Would you just forgive them right now? Come on, say that. I, I forgive. I forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. I release it to you, Lord. And let the blood be applied over your heart. Let the blood be applied over your soul. Symbolically, over your home, over your children. Let the blood be applied over your marriage and over your finances. The blessing's been released. Provision. Whatever you need, there is power in the blood of Jesus. As we get ready to go through this season of the Passover, let's go back to the blood, the blood of Jesus. Let's proclaim it over our homes. Amen. That plague shall not come near us in Jesus' name. It might be coming to near other people, and you may say to yourself, well, I've got friends that are Christians that have got sick from, from the coronavirus. I, I understand all that. I, I, You know, the rain falls on the just and the unjust of life. What I want you to do is I want faith to rise up in your heart right now, and I want you to apply the blood and proclaim it's not going to come near you. This is how we fight our battles. This is why Jesus went to the cross. Amen. So don't get your eyes on the wrong thing here. Get your eyes on Jesus and on what he's done for you. And understand, there's no power in the world that's greater than Jesus. When we come underneath the blood, because it's applied over the doorpost of our home, there's no power greater than that. Amen. So this morning you might also say, hey, I don't, I'm not actually living for God right now. Or maybe I'm not right with God. Or maybe you're tuning in and you've never even heard of what I'm talking about. I want to give you an opportunity right now to give your life to Jesus or to make a commitment to Jesus and get your heart right with Jesus. Do you want to do that? I hope you do. Come on, let's do it together. All right, I'll lead you. It's not hard. Just be sincere with God right now. If you'll be sincere with God, he'll be sincere with you. Now say this where you're at. Say this, everybody together. Say, dear Jesus. Now come on, I mean everybody. Say it again. Say, dear Jesus. Today, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins by the blood of Jesus. Today, I make you my Lord and Savior. I decide to follow you. I apply symbolically the blood of Jesus over the door posts of my heart. And all the power that comes from the blood, I receive it right now. Now, I ask the Lord to say, help me to serve you every day of my life in Jesus' name. I say this, say thank you, Jesus. Come on, say it with your whole heart. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for changing my life today. Help me to serve you forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, we were so excited that you did, okay? And just know this, the Bible says that all of heaven is rejoicing when one person gives their life to the Lord. And so we rejoice with you. We're happy for you. And uh, we believe you're going to have a great week in Jesus' name. Amen. So right where you're sitting, if you enjoyed that message, just give the Lord a hand. He's so worthy. He gets all the credit and all the praise. I want to do one more thing before we get off. I want to pray over our tithe and offering. Our church at Alive Church is a very generous group of people, and they understand the importance of giving their tithe. And so you can give your tithe a couple different ways. If you're used to giving your tithe in person, well, hey, we're not meeting in person. But giving it online is super, super easy. You can go to alivechurch.tv. That's our website, alivechurch.tv, and you can give there. Very simple. An easier way to do to give would be to text the word GIVE 
text and with your phone, you can do it right now, the word GIVE to the number 833-717-0215. I'll give, I'll give that number again, 833-717-0215. Text the word GIVE, and once you do that, it'll send you a prompt, and it takes two minutes to fill out the information, and then you just give the number you want to give. After that, from then on, all you have to do is, is text to that number the amount you want to give. From then on, you don't ever have to set it up again. It's the easiest way to give, and our church will receive it. And so we're going to pray over the tithe and offering right now. Father, we bless the tithe, and we bless the offering. But Father, I thank you that as people give today, you're blessing them. Because your word declares you'll do two things. When we give the tithe, that you will rebuke the the devourer. You will rebuke the devourer, according to Malachi. And number two, you will bring blessing on us. Now, Father, we want the devourer, the thing that's trying to hurt us, to be rebuked, and we want the blessing to be on us, God. So we gladly pay our tithe. We gladly give an offering today. We bless it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you so much for watching today. Lord bless you, and let's have a great week ahead. It is good to be alive.